Sonic Mania is the first good Sonic game. The Sonic franchise is notorious for constantly mixing up its formula and adding new, unnecessary mechanics. Sonic CD was the first to introduce the mechanic of not being very good. Uh, hey, I hope you like spring pads. This game has way too many of them. Apparently the Genesis CD add-on could handle more colours on screen and someone in the graphics department went a little bit mental with it. With visual palettes ranging from the aimless mess of tones and the regular acts to the garish hippie madness of the special stages. What is this colour scheme? It's like I'm chugging acid at a gay pride parade, what the fuck? Levels should be the centrepiece of any good platformer, but in this game they're more like museums of shit that flings you around with fresh gimmicks and horsemen your badnik placements around every goddamn corner. One of the stages is just a more tedious, more irritating version of the most infamously terrible classic Sonic level, and it's one of the better levels in Sonic CD. You've got Quartz Quadrant, with conveyor belts directing you into danger you clearly cannot preempt, Metallic Madness, a horrific maze of rejected mechanics I wouldn't wish on my worst enemies, Collision Chaos, which is just a little bit too much of the bouncy everything, and of course, Wacky Workbench. A stage decked out with bounce pads on the floor, a mess of electricity and ice jets in the middle, and just make all the platforms spinning because we sure as hell wouldn't want to make this pleasant. I mean, it's a video game, not some kind of... hmm. Oh look, it's some pink Sonic fangirl. I sure hope she becomes a recurring main character. The time travelling mechanic I won't dwell on because it's handled alright for the most part. Travelling past a time gate and maintaining a certain level of speed will send you to the future or the past which you can destroy machines in to change the future. It's certainly not complemented by the level design but hardly makes it any worse. It does feel like many of the levels were designed without this mechanic in mind though as the game seems to want to be doing this environmentalism thing with the four versions where the past is a natural untouched wilderness, the present is where Robotnik starts to develop, and the future is either where he overdevelops the land, ruining the natural order, or where technology and nature learn to coexist. It fails, however, because apart from the first stage, no zone has nearly enough natural elements to show this off. In fact, for levels like Wacky Workbench, which are entirely man-made structures, they just colour the machinery green in the past to signify nature. You're not fooling anyone, Sega, and maybe if you spent more time designing coherent level concepts and less time finding the most hideous shade of green to use, I wouldn't be making this video. In the special stages, water makes time go fast, because apparently they weren't frustrating enough. Oh, death, take me now. The music in this game is a compositional masterpiece. With the four time periods for both the Japanese and American soundtracks, every level has eight different themes, and incredibly, on every stage, all eight of them are completely forgettable. Okay, musical taste is subjective and the Japanese Stardust Speedway is decent, but apart from that it's nothing on Sonic 2s or 3s or even 1s. And while you could feasibly appreciate them as songs in their own rights, as a soundtrack it fails because no song remotely fits the level it's paired with. In a title like Sonic 2, a complete stranger could very easily match the music to descriptions of the levels without having to play the game. You've got the rolling hills, the dank and sleazy casino, or the dim, mysterious and spooky cave. In Sonic CD, they all blend together, with a couple of exceptions being the aforementioned Japanese Stardust Speedway and the most unnecessarily edgy and disturbing Sonic theme that is the American version boss music. It's just unnecessary. This is unnecessarily edgy music. Speaking of the bosses, they're really bad. I could go into detail, but do they deserve that? The first one dies in 5 seconds, the final boss is a tad harder, it takes about 15 seconds. One uses bubbles as a shield, and one is beaten by simply running to the right. I mean, you could avoid the spike balls that fall on you, but you don't even need to to win, because game design. Sonic CD shares the same engine and physics as the other Genesis games, and it's not overly buggy or glitchy in the way, so I guess it's at least mediocre. And maybe I was too harsh on the bosses and level design, when you learn how to play them slowly, they're, I guess, acceptable? The best parts of the game are just when the new stuff steps back and it's just allowed to be a Sonic game, like Palm Tree Panic or Stardust Speedway. Alright, this game's not so bad. Why is there a spring there? It's not even a hazard, just a minor inconvenience. It seems a petty gripe, but this is an active decision in a critically acclaimed title in a major video game franchise that does nothing but detract from the experience. Is this a joke? Is this whole game just one big joke? This title seems to actively resist being enjoyed. There are good elements and assets and it was building on a solid foundation, but so much went so badly wrong, making this without a doubt the weakest main series classic Sonic game. Awful bosses, offensively bad level design, and one of the ugliest aesthetics of any 16-bit platformer out there, this game just 
pisses me off. Oh sure, that's fair. Fuck this, I'm playing Mania.